Oh, yes, honey, you can sing really good. Go for it. Oh, yes, that's gorgeous. That's beautiful, honey. Or whatever it is. Then they get on American Idol and step up to the mic and go, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll never, ma- I'll never make that sound again. <laughs> it's simply dreadful. I want you to put your hands together. Just the neighborhood. Just the neighborhood. And welcome to the stage. Big round of applause. Just the neighborhood. There's some kind of thing about streamers and YouTubers anyway, some kind of social anxiety, and that's how they right, you know, the I stream and aspect is the outlet. Yep. But then I've never been like that, but it, I've gotten more like that. It's made it worse. Is it almost conditioning it? It yeah, seems to be. I see what you're saying. It seems to be. I don't know. It's really odd, man. And uh, what, it's, it's I'll crazy. tell you something else, man, is that like with everything going on in the world, right, or in our country, basically, Fake news. With, with, yeah, well, <laughs> with everybody hating each other, right? Yes, or, or Or at least... Um, Being told to hate each other yeah, is a better way to put and, it. And, um, you know, acting out uh, on social media, calling each other idiots and this and that. And, yes. Uh, so there's times when I, when I do encounter people at the store or on a delivery, and I wonder, I'm like, you know... Is this on their mind too? Uh, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know we all kind of like we talked about get our news and and our stay on the you know keep our finger on the pulse by social media and electronics these days. Right? Are they is are they hyper aware of all this stuff? You know, too. Like yes, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, to have the same thoughts. Like, um, like I said something the other day about you know the guys delivering. My furniture. I was like, I wonder if they're what they're thinking about this stuff right now, like the the world and Racial, the divisiveness. Yes, and, yes. All the the strife and the 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 mongering of every type, yeah, and all that stuff. Uh, I guess that's what we're, that's what we're continuing here. It's a good jumping off point, a jumping in point. Yeah, right I here. think so because we're we're wanting to talk about like, we're continuing our conversation essentially from you know out on the front porch, <laughs> right? About fake news. So. Uh, I guess to bring people up to speed, we watch this. We watch these uh, documentaries that are essentially unheard of, which is unbelievable to me. Well, I guess it shouldn't be, given the nature of what we're actually talking about. So let, let's bring that up. We were talking about hoaxed, and it is a documentary that it was apparently everywhere at one time. It's now because when I, we found out, how do we find out about a YouTube video? I think. A trailer. A trailer, yep. right? A and then, trailer. then I sent you the trailer. I was mm-hmm. like, we might have to check this out. This might be a good podcast topic. And especially right now with what's going on uh, and, and all the divisiveness and bullshit. So we found this trailer. It's actually on YouTube. I looked on Amazon first, as usual, because that's usually where I pull up everything. It's listed on Amazon, but it says unavailable in your area. So essentially banned from Amazon is what's happened. And then I saw other people after we watched it covering that whole issue. You've watched a couple of those too. Yeah. But you can see it on Google Play, uh, Apple, I think, and Vudu still, but not on Amazon. And this is one of those things like American History X to me that needs to be shown to everybody in the seventh grade. And yeah. right now, <clears throat> I would I would highly suggest anybody listening or watching to go find this hoaxed documentary and watch it with an open mind, forget your political affiliations, throw them out the window, and just watch the whole damn thing. Because I think it's pretty fair and balanced to both sides. Yeah. And then you watch most of, or I don't know if all or all most. All of, yeah. This, this other one that kind of was the, I almost want to say it was an answer to it. I, yeah, I don't know which one came out first. They both came out about the same time. Yeah. But it feels like it. It, it, on it, on it, HBO. It felt like that almost. And that was After, after Truth. After Truth, yep. And that was, uh, and they're both talking about fake news. Yeah. And to be fair, because this is what we're going to talk about, so the hoaxed one on Amazon, or, or I guess YouTube is where we watched it, is produced by Mike Cernovich, who's been in some shit himself in the past as far as like fake news and all this kind of stuff. But he's the one that produced this. and I, But I think it's really well done. So I'm not worried about what he used to do. Right. And I, I, honestly, we've talked a lot on here. I, I watch documentaries mm-hmm. every day of my life. And I watch them mostly for entertainment value. Right. And uh, sometimes educational, you know, because I'm curious about something. 
and there and and it is a kind of a, an educational type documentary. Yeah, that, that's me too. All right, yep. but this one, um, went into it just not really knowing. I, I knew it was about fake news because you right. you know we we'd seen the trailer, but I came out of it just like you're saying. This is almost um, it's a vital documentary because. Of, of the the world we live in, and specifically where we're at in the world we yes. live in at this moment, the, the, this is a critical moment. In it our it is. Uh, everything's history. so divided, and I yeah. think it's hugely important right now. And fake news gets thrown around, you know, and it has obviously since you know 2015, I guess, or so, with Trump running and all that stuff when he started calling out the media. Um, but I think it's it's more of a meme to people. It's not really that big of a deal, and people don't really look into really what it is, and how it really affects people and affects you know how you how you think and how you feel about you know this group over here. And again, I mentioned the arbitrary box thing in the other podcast. I hate the whole concept, but that's what they have us in. But this is why. Yeah, this is one of the big reasons why we are all in some arbitrary fake box because. You're supposed to be in this group and think this way, and I'm supposed to think over here, and then they tell me you're the enemy, and it's just, it's insane to me. And, so and, it was really eye-opening, the depths of it, I'm saying. And what happens, though, in what you're saying there is when you look at somebody and you're like, okay, you're the one that they're telling me is my enemy. Yes. Right? But people are so fired up right now that when they talk, they confirm it. Like so, yes. it's, it's all, there's almost something to it. I mean, like psychologically, the people who are putting out propaganda, they know you know people, and so yep. um, they they get you worked up because they touch your buttons. Yes, and then somebody else, you'll start feeling a certain way, and somebody else will come along and go. Oh, you sound like you heard that on so and so. Well, that's automatically going to put me on the defensive. Exactly, exactly. Because you know? it because it, your source is wrong. Your source you, is your source wrong. Is yeah. biased or whatever. And and it, so they're automatically telling you with that that phrase is, um, okay, you're not educated enough. Yes. To to have this conversation with me, right? You're an idiot because you got your info from X Y Z. Yes. And. The, the conversation is basically over in their mind before it begins. Absolutely. And there's no, and there's no, so there's no more, like we mentioned a few times on the podcast, the, the one we did on cancel culture, there's no nuance to anything. It's just, it's black and white, cut and dry. You're feel this way and I'm over here and you're wrong because of morals or whatever. And then they think the same thing about you. And it's not going to end until people, more people talk about this type of thing that this documentary does. Right. And that's why I think it's vital. I don't give a shit who you vote for, no. what your political affiliation is, whether you consider yourself liberal, conservative, somewhere in the middle, whatever. These extremes have to go in the sense of this fake news thing. So, let me touch on this too, real quick. Go for it. I, 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 because in in the in to keep this you know flowing from where I was saying is, um, I have to say this. I do have to put out a disclaimer that I am not the most educated when it comes to politics okay right right so uh yes if i if i find a day where i okay this intrigues me this political stuff i see people bitching about which i really don't know a lot about i'll start researching right yes and and so i don't know a lot of key players names and stuff so i have to put this out there and say if you heard here as we start talking about this like that this mike cernovich guy yes. if you know something about him that pisses you off or makes you think he's not a critical credible person to make a documentary right, right right you know don't do yourself that disservice i don't know him i didn't know him till the documentary his right. face does look familiar to me i have seen his face but I don't follow him or I don't know, you know. Exactly. I don't know inside his heart or anything. All I know is he put together a fucking good documentary. Exactly. And that's the only reason I brought it up is to be fair because we're, we're, we're want to practice what we preach. And I try to myself. I've always tried to be consistent. We're just mentioning that because 
The other one, After Truth, is another perspective to, to go check out, yep. regardless of your affiliation. But it's clearly leaning one way. Clearly. But it's produced by Brian Stelter, Stelter I believe, who is a CNN correspondent. And a, I believe uh, he was the executive producer, but I believe he's also a... He's definitely working for CNN. So the point being that one of them I feel, and I think you feel the same way, is fair because if you watch the whole thing, the whole thing. you're going to get both sides. Yep. You're going to get people, players on both sides that's uh, been victims of it yep. and all that stuff. It doesn't matter their political by, uh, leaning. But the, the After Truth on HBO is clearly only pointing out the right-wing crazies. That's it. And, that's and they're the only ones going. dangerous. And they're the only exactly. ones... I mean, they don't use the word only, but it seems to be the only things they cover on there. Right. They're not covering, uh, you know, anything from the left wing propagandists. When, and, and actually, that's the part of it. That's, and it, we're, it's, we're doing it to put it out there to be fair and open is that if you don't, because if you don't read this, you know, who produced things and whatever, there, you can't see the, if there's an agenda or not, you know. So yeah. we want to be clear on that. But do not, do not. Miss watching it because of the name is yeah, all I'm saying. I would not either. I would not. And, and I'm not educated enough to – I went into it with open mind to watch an interesting documentary, and it far succeeded any expectations I had. Yes. It's so well put together. And I know that there are people who are in here who are like hot issue people right. who, who yeah. I could see – People saying, "Oh God, they're talking to them." Yes, and that's Don't not what this that is at all. Yourself. Don't, and that's not what we're saying that. at all. We're just we're going to give you a couple of examples because we, like I, I would I would say, we you know go watch it first before you even listen to this because we're we're going to give some examples. I mean, not that. It's going to spoil anything right. you know, or anything like that. But I don't think just so. to, just to get the idea of besides just throwing around the term fake news. Just because you don't agree with one side, it's a lot more deep than that and serious, and that's what's causing this big rift. I just showed you a clip. Um, I don't. You said you didn't recognize it. That came from Vice, which you know. There you go. There's the ones that helped produce this other one on HBO. It's a good about clip. Twitter, um, and it's just one example of why social media. It's a it's a great tool. It's a tool, but that's all it is. Yeah. For somebody to get their news off Twitter and not check everything on both sides is beyond my uh, understanding. I don't get that. But the example, I, the clip I showed you was, it showed this guy had graphed out like in, almost an, um, an AI type thing, graphed yeah. out Twitter followers or Twitter and their followers. So imagine big blue, a big blue cloud of lines going to follower to follower to follower in this big computer graph, right? And the blue represented the, Left mm -hmm. and the red over here represented the right, right? Just like you would in politics, blue and red, whatever. And then he put out like he, he made this little blinking thing where the chart would blink, where all the verified check. This is why there's a meme about verified check marks on Twitter. Oh shit, let's see what the check marks are saying today. They were all on the left when blue blinking. Yes. And there was none on the right. Very few. Or I, don't, I didn't see any. So few you couldn't notice. And you couldn't even notice it on the graph because you're talking about millions and millions of people. But the, the, the interesting part of it was there was no connection. There was very few connections where it was all these lines. It's hard to describe this graph. You'd have to see it, but it's really out. But open. imagine this big graph where you get all these, this blob of red and this blob of blue. The blob of blue is much bigger and it's got all the blinking lights. But they don't, they barely touch because mm -hmm. they don't follow each other. Yeah, there's like one small piece where they kind of. Yeah, bridge. and the point is, is everybody's in their own fucking bubble. That's and so right. it's confirmation bias. That's all it is. So you, you're, you, whenever you're tweeting, you're tweeting to the choir, essentially. Right. And yes, there's, you know, there's small connections. You got a handful of people, um, you know, maybe arguing or whatever, you know, having an argument on Twitter or whatever. But it's, it's a shitstorm over there, is what it is. And, People literally get their news from Twitter and Instagram. They read the headline. Their attention spans 10 seconds, like we all know all people are. And they don't bother to read the actual article. Or maybe if they do, follow up on another article to make sure they're fact-checking that article. And I know it's hard, and it shouldn't be that way. But the point is, is that it is that way. It's not back in the 60s and 70s where you had three channels, and they actually reported news. They just gave you the facts and let you decide what that meant. Today, they're telling you what to think, and it just it's insane to me, and yeah. that's why we're so divided, when, and I hate it. 
When we were little, Chris, if you think about it, what fake news meant to us was National Enquirer, yes, Sun magazines, yes, where they had those Bat Boy eats his sister, yeah. you know. <laughs> That's a good example. And it's like... <laughs> but that is exactly you know, right. And now... It's dead on. That's what you're saying right now is happening in legitimate yes. um, news play sources. They will use a clickbait headline. And, and a completely erroneous headline. Erroneous. Not even just clickbait. I mean, I, I can kind of get clickbaity to get people yeah. to click your stuff just like you would on YouTube or something. But it's just a straight lie. And... And that's all it's read. And dude, the Enquirer, I watched a documentary on that. He owned an empire. I mean, he yeah. was rich as hell because people like clickbait type, you know, crazy shit. They do watch train wrecks. Yeah, for a I've, it's like when you stand in the line at the grocery store, right? And you're in the line. That's why you have the little things beside you with the candy bars and the Enquirer magazines because yeah. those are the impulse buys. Yep. Oh, shit. What happened to the queen? I remember those articles. That's exactly And then exactly it was all right. these secret things about Diana back in the day, and you would like, and somebody was, I don't know why it's entertaining, but they picked it up. Yeah, JFK's alive. JFK's and, alive and grab a Snickers. That's it. It's, <laughs> and it's, that's why they're there. And, you know, everybody seemed to agree what fake news yeah, was. Yeah, and we so it was almost to a, believe, yeah. you know, hey, there's interesting stories here. But don't get too caught up in yeah, believing. Take this it stuff. with a grain of salt. Yes. It's, it's to sell magazines, and it turns out some of those things were true. That's right. But most of it was complete bullshit, yes. and everybody knew it. And and, and so today, now, though, nobody like knows it. Across the board, it's a sensationalized uh, stuff. You know, sensational headlines is what yes. they care about. They don't really care as much about the truth anymore. If they we, don't care about the truth. If we have um, the truth somewhere in there. Awesome for us, but if not, screw it. We'll print a retraction like we've talked about. Yes, this is what drives me crazy. Yeah. They put out a story, this complete bullshit uh, or false or whatever, and, or at least in some way or misleading that may have grains or whatever. Then they get called out on it and busted. They print a little retraction or they tweet it. Maybe they tweet it or something, but it don't get seen. Like in the newspaper, like in the old days, if you had a mistake, they would print a retraction but then in modern times, it's buried this big on the fourth page. Yep. Nobody ever sees the retraction, and they know that's going to happen. They know. By the way, they this know. is modern time because this is being weaponized. It is. It's it's a, it's literally a weapon, um, of mass information. So somebody puts out an article with a big shitty headline that's bullshit, and they nobody reads the article, or they bury the actual story in there somewhere, maybe just to cover their asses legally. Mm -hmm. They know it's wrong. And they know they'll have to say, oh, we're sorry, we misquoted something a week or two later when the uproar happens. But when they do the the the, the retraction, they know it's not going to get the same traction and Hell it's not going to no. go viral. And the it's all about ratings and who's got the story first. That's all they give a fuck about. And, of course, now there's no real reporters anymore. It's all political agendas, and that's what gave rise to people that we talk about in this thing and they, they are basically participate in these documentaries is what they call the, the, the new news or, you know, independent reporters. Yes. And they're, that's where that void is being filled. And I think they're so valuable, Absolutely. especially now after watching that documentary, I see, I see the value. And the difference is though, is that for example, I will give a couple examples in a minute, but for example, I just wrapped right off my head. Tim pool is a guy that comes to mind. He has been on Joe Rogan several times. As a matter of fact, he was on Joe Rogan the first time. I think you saw him when he had uh, Jack on there from Twitter and his lawyer. Oh yes. That, yes. I, that was probably the first or one of the very first times he was on Joe Rogan calling out how they censor conservative mm -hmm. people. And Tim Pool, by the way, is a Democrat. Uh, I'm just saying, just to be f clear, he and he he's a, a self-proclaimed Democrat and liberal, but he's not afraid to call it out. He's not afraid to call them out. And so that's the difference. Uh, was the big point they made is, yes, I may have uh, on my own biases. I may be this uh, way politically. I may lean right or lean left or whatever. But I'm not going to lie to you about. it. I'm going to tell you that right up front. That's yes. the difference between them. And CNN or MSNBC or Fox News or whatever you want to pick one uh, is, well, there's a slight difference, but because now they pretty much admit to it. But back a few years ago, 
they won't tell you that up front. They want to pretend like it's the news. And it's not just what they tell you, it's what they don't tell you. That's yeah. the bigger thing to me. So they pretend like they're a legitimate news source because it's on TV, right? It's got to be real. That's right. But some asshole on YouTube who's got you know a couple hundred thousand followers who's doing this reporting from his iPhone, it, he can't be trusted. He's not. He don't have a check mark by his name, right? And he's the guy out there with the camera doing the footwork and actually getting the actual story, regardless of his affiliation. He's telling you and showing you, and that's the difference. So for somebody to go on Twitter or Instagram. I'm not even sure how you get a news story on Instagram. Right. I don't. But people do. They say, I get my news from Instagram. Are you yeah, kidding? Yeah, you're right. They do say that. That's right. Like, and you believe that shit? You're going to read an article or at least a headline. Because, you know, again, they're not reading the articles. Right. It you're going to read be. a headline that somebody said something horrible and this run with it. And they know it's going to damage that person's reputation. It goes back to that cancel culture. I don't care if it's somebody yeah, on YouTube or the fucking president. They're going to do it. Yeah, the cancel culture. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, these podcasts, podcasts kind of tie together. And it wasn't strategic on no, our part. No. It just happened to be this. But yeah, I, the whole time we're talking about this, I'm thinking a lot about that cancel culture stuff. Yeah, and because um, that's the goal. Yeah, that's the goal. Because honestly, like this documentary that we're talking about it, it touches on say like the pizza gate thing. Yeah. Uh, the comet ping pong place. Uh, there's a guy we found out it's from right up the road here. Oh uh, yeah. Two towns over. I, you know, they're going to pick the, it's always North Carolina. We, it's such like the fucking Bigfoot. Get Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah. Guy. It's going to be him every time. But honestly, this dude seemed cool. I mean, he really did. He got caught up in the hype. Um, and that's the thing. The, the, it, it's kind. It's trying to show that how the damage that fake news can do. Yeah, that's the that's the purpose of the whole thing. And so, honestly, if this documentary was trying to slant one way or the other, they wouldn't have even covered it. You know, right? Um, but yeah, my thing is this: if, if I could just say that, because it brings up Alex Jones a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. And and I mean, and obviously Alex a polarizing Jones, figure. He is. <laughs> I mean, he's a. He's crazy. He's he's nuts, dude. He, he is. is, and he's so loud and boisterous and obnoxious. And but he stuff. plays this character. I right. think he admits this he, finally. Yeah, and you know he turns on and off. Um, yeah. Yep. But honestly, it's I, when you're doing something for a living, <laughs> and your living depends on ratings. It kind of yes. goes back to that National Enquirer thing, you know. Oh, they started out as a legitimate magazine, right? Yep. Or, or newspaper. Yep. And then they saw the spikes. They saw the spikes when they would when it had do the, crazy the stuff, drama stuff, conspiracy type yes, stuff. Yes. And I think Alex Jones got caught up in that. <laughs> uh, I do believe he cares about this country. I do believe that um, he would hate to know that his words caused somebody to die if if that ever happened. Um, but he's passionate. He's very yeah, passionate. Absolutely. And sometimes But what up but they'll use him as the poster boy of they do. fake news. They do. And because he really he is not gonna give up on a uh theory, a conspiracy no, theory no. until he exhausts everything. Yes. So it could take it could take months or a year to <clears throat> keep discussing and keep digging and keep digging and and, and I'm not gonna say and and he's just the example I'm using right this second. A lot of people do this. I'm just saying, obviously, he he would like to uncover something yeah, that yeah. Uh, confirmed what he said all along, because then that gives him more validation and he's more legitimate, and right. then he can get more followers. Like, oh, Alex was right about that one. You know what I mean? So I I do believe he's looking for the truth. Um, as as all people are in that in that same kind of field, they all happen to really um, like to identify with what side they are on political politically. Yes. Whereas I don't think that's as important. And I, that's another thing we've kind of been pushed to in this country is wearing what political affiliation we are. You know, right? Like yeah, right. I, that's how you identify. Really? Hey, I'm James. I'm uh, you know whatever. Yeah, yeah. That, it's your jersey or your team. Our grandparents didn't never, never did that shit, man. No, politics is a personal thing, 
and you only discuss really tough issues with people you care about. But but right, and but the thing about the 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 modern I don't know this climate is is you can't have a discussion because you're supposed to hate them because they're they're not as as uh, educated as you. Uh, you know, or whatever they they put you in these boxes, and if you're part of this team, you're up here on the on the uh, pedestal, not down here where the you know I'll just use the example they used the last few years. The deplorables are yeah, whatever it is, you know uh, I got more virtue, you know mm-hmm. it's that type of thing, and so you can't even have a conversation because when you come out of your bubble and you meet somebody with a different idea, where, mm-hmm. because you're, there's no ideas allowed in your bubble. It don't matter which right. side it is, the other ideas are not allowed. Um, and you step out of that bubble for whatever reason, then it's like somebody, it's almost like, I always use this. I know I overuse it, but it's like Simon Cowell and American Idol. Oh, yeah. Everybody's brought up. Oh yes, honey. You can sing really good. Go for it. Oh yes. That's gorgeous. That's beautiful, honey. Or whatever it is. Then they get on American Idol and step up to the mic and go, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll never, ma- I'll never make that sound again. <laughs> simply dreadful. And then, and then Simon slaps him in the face with reality. Yeah. And they go, because somebody lied to you. They and did. so, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I just, just, it's just the most clear example I can always think of of this type of reality check. Yeah, and so the whole idea of these bubbles have to go and safe spaces, and if you want diversity, that includes diversity of thought. Yeah, and it's just it's ridiculous. So it's uh, not- Alex Jones, like you mentioned, is just I think he's one of the more you know outlandish guys. Obviously, a few things he said have been right too. That's right. But the point yeah. being that they'll always use him to make that side. See, they're all like that, but that's just the extreme. Yeah. And then they'll use somebody on the left, for example, um, you know, and then that's all, that's everybody over there. But that's just the extreme. And that's where the problem is, is they, you get categorized with these people way over here. I don't mm-hmm. give a shit which side it is just because you have a certain opinion on, I don't even know if it's a policy, whatever it may be. So now families are splitting up. Yeah, they won't talk to each other. You've mentioned personal friends. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine that I would ever have an opinion about a, a policy or politics or a politician in particular, and a best buddy of mine like James or my own daughter or whatever would be like, "Yeah, you're just. I just can't. I just can't. I can't talk to you anymore. I, I just can't imagine that. It's just so ridiculous when you think about it." It is. And, and you know, I, as far as Alex goes, um, I think he harped on the Pizzagate thing a lot. Uh, I know he harped on Sandy Hook. Mm-hmm. And so uh, this dude drives up there from where we're from and, and goes to check to make sure there's no pedophile ring, right? In this pizza joint. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it, nobody died, but it could have been uh, No, and but see, that's the other thing, too. It's a too. scary thought. Now, I'm not trying to justify this in any way. This guy went up there with a gun. I don't I don't care. It doesn't matter what it is. But uh, he went up there with a gun, and the, I think you said he shot it in the air or something. Yeah, I or, think he shot three times. But they keep calling it a shooting. Yeah, yeah. And I, I know you hey, can split hairs you, and call it a shooting, you, but right. we know what... Yeah, what people but, mean but you know they what they're trying that. to say. Yeah. You're trying to when you just read the surface of that, they're saying somebody got hurt because of fake news. Now it's a perfectly legitimate example because somebody did listen to whoever he listened to. Yeah, yeah, I don't know exactly. Yeah, but. nobody knows exactly where he got his information, but he goes with an actual gun, and you know perhaps he's going to uh, instigate violence. But if this if in his mind, if he saw that this was a real thing, he would have gladly done something about it. He was there to free kids. That's what, yes. In his mind, he was doing the right thing. Right. He was a vigilante. Yes. He he was going to go Batman up there. Fucking <laughs> He was going to go up there. He They said he was like opening doors, flipping ping pong tables, looking behind pictures, looking for some secret... Secret entrance. Oh, that's right. That's looking where he shot. He shot the lock out on this locked door. Right, right. That's right. right. right, right. There was a door that was locked. He shoots the lock out, opens it, and it turns out it's a storage closet. Right. But he and that was supposed to be the secret entrance to the base. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, he honestly, when he realized there was nothing there, he goes out in the road and gets um, arrested. And the guy, the cop, 
comes up to him and he's like, do you work there? He's like, no, basically I'm the dude that was in there doing that. He's like, why did you do it? He said, uh, I was, I was, um, just making sure, no, making sure there was nothing going on. Yeah. I wanted to find out if I had to free some kids here. So, you know, I, I hate, he seems so level headed to do something so radical. Right. So, but that, that's also kind of what we're talking about. That's what fake news can do. Right. It's a dangerous exactly. thing. And it's, it's a, it's a, it's both sides. It, I, my eyes have been open so much on both sides by watching these documentaries. Yeah, man. and I'm telling you, and and that's the thing. So, for example, just on the bias thing. So, you know that after truth is going to talk about that particular incident because this guy was right wing or whatever. Yeah. However, they want to right. label him, but they're not going to talk about the same thing happened on the other side where a guy goes and shoots up senators at a softball practice. The congressman. Yes. That was crazy. I mean, so these are this is what it can lead to, and it's it's absolutely ridiculous because they just some something called got viral, some fake news tweet or whatever went viral, and instead of people sitting down and researching and finding out the truth about it, they just acted on it. And as far as the Alex Jones things goes, I mean, obviously he's the extreme example, but he was deplatformed. He was, uh, you know, and again, you know, there's it's private companies. So yeah. it's the First Amendment that doesn't necessarily apply to them. But here's the thing. Do you really want, if you're on the other side, for example, and again, he's just an example. He's just one of the biggest out there that people would recognize, oh, God, he's the crazy one. And he is. Mm -hmm. But do you really want him deplatformed? Because what if you have the counter to Alex Jones on the other side? Right. Someday, you know, spitting out stuff. And a lot of it's, you know, dumb and, and probably a bunch of bullshit. But some of it's true. Do you want that free speech taken away? Because that's what it is. It I mean, it's free speech. Yeah. And not to get in again to the you know private company versus you know the Constitution, whatever. But do you do you really want somebody deplatformed? Um, now, if somebody is clearly calling for violence, yeah, that's already that, against the Constitution. That's right. So we're not saying that at all. I'm not saying so, that. I don't want people spewing that kind of bullshit, calling for violence. I mean, that happens enough too but the difference is is this is a guy who's you know he's saying what he says he believes what he believes and then maybe he corrects stuff maybe he doesn't whatever but he's not directly saying you need to go out here and do this this or this yeah. he's just but if anything else he just at least opens your eyes and makes you think about things and that's all we're saying yeah is don't fucking you just said this out out there outside and uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll make the point again, but don't just watch, I don't know, pick one, CNN, and then believe that that's what's going on in the world. Right. I, what, I, what I just told James is like, you know, turn your TVs off for a week, go outside in your own communities, in your own cities and whatever, and see what's going on there and compare it to what they're telling you is going on. I believe in that wholeheartedly, man. Because, and, and plus, I just <laughs> told James that you'll probably feel better. You won't be as depressed after a, a couple of days. You'll have a little more hope and faith in humanity again because they're telling you what's going on in the world when you know it don't quite match up with what you see in your everyday life. No. Now, I'm not saying there's not problems. Right. I'm not saying there's not no issues. Way. Not at all. I'm not saying that. I'm saying to the extreme levels of... They literally think that there's people dying in the streets. They'll have you believe in that. Yes, that's where I believe that this kind of new wave journalism is so important. It, absolutely. Because if right now, if somebody would believe an anchor, a news anchor sitting in a, uh, you know, a city 500 miles away versus me, if yes. they would believe them about what's going on in my town more than they would believe me, you know, we have a problem there, but that's because there, there's not enough of people out there going, Hey, this is really what's going on because right. honestly, man, if it wasn't for the news telling me how horrible it is right now, I don't know that I would see it in, in my day to day activity dealings with people. Th that's right. That's I'm, right. You know, and not not saying that shit's not going on, not saying it's fake videos they're showing of, you know, people standing in the street and cars trying to get through and they're getting hit with skateboards and stuff. I mean, I know 
that that's happening somewhere. Yes, but I I feel like the news almost keeps that flame stoked. It all absolutely does, and it's an election year. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, about it. that's that's why it's even hyper, more hyped up right now, and this is coming from networks who have been busted for trying to pretend there are bigger crowds at places or lesser crowds at places, depending yeah, on which, yeah. which, what you're talking what, about. What it is it? They've there, literally yeah. got busted having people all get into this, the same shot where there's 10 or 20 people and they act like there's 4,000 behind them. Or the same fucking network who are sitting in the same parking lot saying they're on a satellite feed Wow! and the yeah. same bus passes behind them. I mean, they've got busted by this a million times, but those things don't go viral. They're only in certain circles. Right. So in the bubbles, they each go viral, but they don't spread to the other side. Like the, the, going back to the Twitter thing, there's no connection, so therefore there's no real communication. And even if there were uh, was communication, which you know some people are starting to open up, I believe, is this type of thing. Like we're talking about right now on the podcast, we don't normally do this type of no, shit. No, we don't. But it's getting so ridiculous that yeah. you have to say something about it. I mean, we know what's going on in the world. Right. We just try to focus on things that entertain us because we try to get away from the real world and politics and all that. What about that article you read today? That was a weird perfect, kind of fake perfect news. Perfect example of fake news. All right, so here's an example. This just came out like five, six hours ago. This is on Twitter. Now, this is by NBC News. Uh, Should I don't be watch, a reputable source. You, 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 because they ha, you know, they're essentially the old blue check mark. They're verified, Damn right? They're on TV. It's got to be real. Right. Michigan judge, a, I'm sorry, a Michigan judge denies the release of a 15-year-old black girl who has been jailed since mid-May for not doing her online schoolwork. That's the headline. It's a horrible headline. That sounds horrible. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, you're outraged. You should be yeah. by that headline. So that says that, you know, that is the headline. That's what people are going to see. And they're outraged. They're just going to retweet it. They're going to retweet it. Yeah. And that's it's, gonna, and it's blown up. And it's an outrage, you know, because we're in the outrage culture. And that's what's going to happen without reading in the article. And then when you read the article, it literally says buried down at the very bottom, almost in the middle somewhere, in one little paragraph. She was not detained because she didn't turn in her homework, in Brennan said, the judge. She was detained because she was a threat to her mother. Not once, but three times. Her mother so there you go. filed the charges of assault. So right. it's trying to stoke racial tension yeah. by saying this uh, black girl was held for not doing her homework, right. which sounds ridiculous. I know. If it was that was literally the case, everybody should be outraged. But that's not actually what happened at all, and they passed that off as news. And this, this is this, this is, is today. Just a, a small example. That's of, just a tiny example. Yeah, everything that this is the way shit works. And so when you scroll through this thread, people are pointing this out. But one of the sources replied to this NBC, uh, or one of the people in this thread replied, without obviously reading the article. And says, no judge violating someone's rights and endangering their health deserves this kind of headline uh, an anonymity. Let her know what you think of this. And gives out the judge's oh my God. address, name, and all that stuff. Now, this is the courthouse, not her personal, like, doxing her. Right. But Close enough. There, it doesn't matter. She's going to get all this, like, this courthouse or this system is going to be overwhelmed by tweets and emails and all this yeah. kind of stuff because they didn't bother to read the article. And more importantly... NBC flat out lied to you. They flat out lied to everybody with this bullshit headline about some girl who's held for not doing her homework. And it just this is the this is kind of what put me over the edge about talking about this, right? Because it was, it was a, just an example I saw today after we watched this thing, and, and it's absolutely ridiculous. So what I'm saying is, if you're getting your news from Twitter or Instagram or BuzzFeed. Or CNN, Fox News, I don't give a shit which side it's on. For God's sake, actually read it and then check on the opposite side. It was, you know, find some other source that backs it up or, or actually uh, denounces it. And like you said, the big point here stop listening to people on what to think and how to th and, and think for yourself. That's, yeah. that's what it boils down to. They're telling you what to think instead of you thinking critically for yourself. And that's what their goal is. And and you you all know this to be true. And, uh, you you know, know it to be we, true. <laughs> I'm sorry, you, you brought Darth, you, Darth Vader out. <laughs> if you ever leave your house and 
or you know and 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 hang out with other people or you ever have people over at your house or you ever go to a family member's house any kind of interaction like that you know there are so, always somebody say somebody pops up on TV a congressperson and uh, right, right. it'll have a R or a D in front of their name yes yes and there's somebody in the room's going to be like ah oh. That Democrat, <laughs> uh, I want to see what this bitch has got to say, <laughs> you know, and uh, or uh, vice versa. Well, you know, you ain't know? nothing come out of my mouth. It's horseshit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because of the letter, because of a letter, <laughs> and and that's because everybody has they have gotten entrenched on teams. That's why I'm and, a registered I, by the way. Just saying, right. just throwing that out there. And it's but, weird, man. That. <laughs> like okay, we're we're right now. The, the, there's a big racial uh, thing going on, and the whole point of it is, you know, hey, put yourself in my shoes for a minute. You know, yeah, yeah. things are different. Things the world happens different to me, sure, than it does you. That's the whole thing here. We need empathy in the world. That, yes. That's, that's the and whole nuance. thing. And nuance. Nuance is there's nothing and so is black and white. Yeah. Like, so if 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 we're going to do that with something as, you know, like skin color, like let's, let's start listening to other people's thoughts if they have a different letter in front of their name. Sure. You know, I mean, they're not all dumb asses if you, if you like vote differently than, them i mean right. people have shit to say empathize until you walk a mile in somebody else's shoes man you don't know what they're going through right and i'll tell you another thing it's funny you know my dad has just recently gotten on facebook <laughs> right well we've had this conversation and so he shares everything with everybody he, he has the same name as me too yes so that's yes. just really confusing i hate seeing my name like like james that had i his, didn't like james had to show him how to not share it with everybody because he would share something with everyone and of tag his followers. everybody <laughs> and, and i started getting all these james Wright tags and the funny thing is man i see him you know Hopping on old trends because yes. this is all new to him. Yeah, all new to him. Yep. So don't forget that, like when there's say a conspiracy theory out there that you've already investigated and you've already come to a conclusion in your mind, and then somebody at work says, "Well, have you heard about this?" They could have just gotten into this. So right. instead of calling them an idiot. Try to educate them in a gentler way, right? Because you they, want people to be involved in the political get process, into right? Into trends or and learn about things at different times. We don't, we don't all, you know, learn things and study things right. at the same time. So give people a little, um, what would you call it? A little, a li little leeway in the beginning, sure. But we're so divided right now that oh, yeah. oh God, you know, you're a birther. You know, yeah, you, right. you still believe in Pizzagate? Yeah, right, I, you right. Know, and, and don't get me wrong. Shit like that makes my skin crawl, too, when I hear some certain phrases come out of people's mouths. But if we're in this world, in this time in our country where we're trying to be, you know, have empathy for people who are different than us, can't that just go all the way across the board, whether they're Christian and you're not? Or vice versa, or you know, they're Muslim and you're not. Let's we're all different, but we are all and see that's, very similar that's, too. Yeah, exactly. And that we used get to past be the differences, right? Well, that's the thing. If you think about from, let's say, we you, you typically cover entertainment and pop culture. If you think about the old days of comedy, we talked about Eddie Murphy uh, maybe not coming back in our cancel culture thing. Yeah, because we are different. But that's a great thing. It used to be a good thing. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a yeah. good thing because we all share cultures, and that's the melting pot of America and all that stuff. Right. And now it's like people want you to be different, and it's supposed to be a bad thing, or it's I guess in the sense of a good thing so you can like throw spit wads at them or whatever box you're they, right. they place you're, you in. You're, you're right. And it used to be celebrated, and we all laughed about it. Mm -hmm. We all laughed at Eddie Murphy and mm -hmm. Richard Pryor making jokes, and and it was funny. And all the TV shows we mentioned before, and it's, but today, they couldn't get by with it. Right. It's, everybody's so sensitive, and and that type of thing. And I'm not saying everybody's a snowflake. I'm not. I, there, you know, there's certain things that back in those days that was was a little, 
rough around the edges or whatever that just wouldn't fly today. But some of most of it was not. Right. Most of it was harmless comedy, whether it was a comedy skit, stand up show, whatever you may what may be. It was all funny and people laughed, and it brought people closer. Just like I always said about, you know, people say, well, I don't do sports. We did a sports podcast. We had like five or ten comments. I don't do sports. I'm out. They're out. Yep. Fine. Fine. But the reason that sports are important is not just because, because when I pick a team, it's going to have a fucking logo of like the NBA or the NFL on it. Not an R or a D or yeah. whatever. Right. The point being is that sports, things like that, and just to throw this as an example, that's one of the few things in life that brings us together. I'm at the Panther Stadium back in the old days when the Panthers, <laughs> when I went to Panthers games. <laughs> I didn't give a shit. Down that line, which wherever I'm sitting, we all wear them blue. That's right. We all wear them blue or black or the mix or silver, or whatever it may be. I didn't ask the dude next to me, hey, who you voting for? <laughs> right. And he didn't ask me. And she didn't ask her the person sitting beside. It's just, that's what it does. You're all on the same team for that moment. Kind of the same way when something horrible happens, like let's say 9-11. For a while, everybody's on the same team. That's right. And it's it's a it's it's so horrible that it has to take a tragedy like that for something like that to happen. To have that feel-good American pride again. You know what I mean? It's horrible. If... if your house caught on fire right now. Fire truck pulls Please up. Don't. The dude comes <laughs> running with the hose, right, to put your fire out. Mm-hmm. You're not going to say, whoa, 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 whoa. No. Yep. Who'd you it, vote for? No. Nope. But. Some people would now. Right? It feels that way. It, I'm serious. It's exactly what I'm getting it. at. What I'm yep. seeing now on social media is freaking <clears throat> that guy's a piece of shit. I wouldn't want him on my yard if my house was burning down. Right. But the, if he was on fire and I had a cup of water, yeah. I drink the water. <laughs> I <And> mean, <laughs> it, it drives me crazy because I know. And and the kids don't. The kids don't know. I really believe that. But I know what our generation knows most people are fucking good people. Yes, they are. Most they really are. are. I yes. don't care who they voted for, what color skin they are, nope. what genitalia is hanging between their legs. Nope. They are good people, and they their family gets together on special occasions, and they have beautiful family moments just like you do. We're like the old saying: "Well, put put pants on one leg at a time, just like them." You know, right. it doesn't matter how rich or poor or whatever, and. The new these new kids because Chris and I are new kids, <laughs> the youth of the, America, the youths, <laughs> they came up in a different time. And Chris and I have a friend. I was telling him about. Uh, he's a he's a rougher looking guy. He's a musician, a mechanic. He's got a long beard. Um, he his son. He's not allowed oh, yeah, to yeah. see his grandson right now, right? Because he. He he said something to his his son was all over social media saying the only good cop is a dead cop and you know fuck the police and all this stuff. He said to his son, his grown son. <laughs> he said know, this is crazy even to say it. He said, uh, "Now you know all cops aren't bad. You know so and so helped you out when you were, you know you could have gotten a lot of trouble and he was pretty lenient with you. Remember that, right? And uh." So now, though, our friend can't see his grandkid because his son said, oh, you like the cops? You're racist. I can't let my kid be around you. Label, slap it on him. Right. His own fucking dad. So It's right. So, I mean, where do you think that young guy, where do those feelings come from? It wasn't from his own interactions with his dad. No, it wasn't from his own he, interaction with the police. Right. Because the funny thing was, our buddy was telling his black friend, hey, I can't see my grandkid because, I mean, in his house, his black friend sitting on the couch at his house. <laughs> yeah, this he's racist. like, hey, man, I can't see my grandkid because my son says I'm racist. And his black friend's like, you racist? The guy I've been friends with and hanging out with since junior high? The guy lets me ride his Harley anytime I want to? I mean, 
the kid knows this about his dad. Yes. He knows his dad's not racist, but because he's bombarded with all this bullshit on social media yeah. and, it, and honestly it's almost a, fas- a fad it's almost like a fashion trend it's cool to be woke i guess is the term right and life and, is too short and like, and you're literally separating your family over it i mean right. it's, it's absolutely ridiculous it's 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 a sad story it's sad right it's a sad state of affairs and that's what i'm saying about Turn off the fucking TVs about with news and stuff like that, and just live in your own world. Yes, I'm not. I'm. I'm not saying don't be involved in politics. Be involved in local politics. Number one, if you think some presidential candidate is going to come in and save the day, you're fucking crazy. It's up to you. And local government affects you more than that. And state second, and then federal. I'm not saying don't pay attention. I'm just saying, do it, just think for yourself. Research things. You know, if and I know it's it, you shouldn't have to these, but you do. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Life's not fair. Sorry, it's just not right. And you may have to do a little more, put a little more effort into figuring out if this story is true or false or wherever it lies in between. You know, the gray area in the middle. That's what I was saying earlier about three sides to a coin. This is this person said this is what happened. The second side is this person said what happened, so and the third side is what really happened. And unfortunately, you got to go search for that now. I really wish, say on Facebook, um, I wish that there was an option where you could opt out of having anything political come up in your feed. Yeah, and yeah, to yeah. where like there's a separate section of Facebook for people who want to get on there and argue and post stuff all day because I, you know, I just. Wouldn't mind just seeing, hey, my my buddy planted a garden or something like that, you know? Not, hey, this is why you should hate 10 out of the 12 people you'll encounter today. <laughs> exactly. You know? <laughs> 10, 10 out of the 12. That's about right. They're t- that's basically what they're doing. It is. I mean, I'm seeing people... Look, and let me say, we're not uh, naive enough to, to, to not understand that we live in a small town, a small rural town, and things are just different here. Um, we're not saying obviously that obviously big city life is different. I agree. Now a hundred percent. I know wanna, it is. You want to check on who's running those. That's your business. But the point being that, I, I mean, we're, we're, we know this, but in our worlds or world in here locally, we don't see a lot of this strife between races, po- politics. I mean, yeah, you'll see people with their flags out in their front yards or their political signs, but nobody goes and, rips them out of their yard. Mm-mm. Nobody marches down the street because they support this politician versus that one. You know, it just don't happen here like people, you I will, think, think it does in the South. I'm you, not you'll sure. You'll get the bird shot at you or something. You know, yeah, somebody might maybe blow the horn and flip you off if they see, a, you know, Bush Cheney bumper sticker <laughs> Bush, on you. Because they're still around. <laughs> a lot of they them. They are. I, they are. They <laughs> are. <laughs> fucking uh, McCain Palin, <laughs> yes, <dude. laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, but yeah, and and here's the here, the weird thing is, man, <laughs> is well, we do live in a laid back, a pretty laid back place, and yes, um, and yes. and throughout our lives, has have have I seen a white person and a black person getting a fist fight? Yeah, I have. Yes, but you know what? I've seen white dudes and white dudes fight. I've seen black dudes and black dudes fight. Yep. So when I saw that white dude and the black dude fight, I didn't think it was a race war. I just thought no. these two guys must have, you know, they, bumped into each other so, wrong. Something. Somebody talks shit. It's, not, it's I mean, just pretty much that simple. It really is. I mean, it really is. And and again, this is just our experience. Right. Forty right. something years a piece. We have. Over, <laughs> we have over eighty years of combined experience and here never, on the Smoke Screen Podcast. <laughs> never have I seen, no. um, you know, any clan paraphernalia at oh a buddy's of mine's house. No. That, that's so whatever. I'm man. telling you right now, though, the news but, is but telling the, you but, that but, the clan is still a serious boogeyman to be worried about. Yes, and they, the and way they not they the way they have you people. I guess people believe in is that down here in these in the southern areas, it's just like. A normal thing, right? Like you know, everybody's got one of their. Never closet. have I ever seen a burning cross in it's, my life. Uh, no, never. It's just, it's just dumb. You have, you may have fifteen dudes out in some, I don't know, bumfuck part of North Carolina meeting up, thinking they're important, 
and drinking beer on a Thursday night saying white power or whatever. Oh, yeah. You but, know, but they're retarded, but, number yeah. one. And number two, they have no influence on anything, and they're not even an issue. That generation is gone. Period. They existed, yes. Sure. In my lifetime, hell yeah, they were in politics in my lifetime. Dude, they're gone. We're in a new time, which is the time we've been looking forward to. Right. Where we could put all this stuff behind us. Right. But now and the now, news is bombarding us with it again and saying, hey, guess what? Lynchings are still a problem. Know. You know, <laughs> uh, it. It's really crazy. They'll bring up all kind of old shit. Like I saw in my Facebook feed. Look at this book. And it was a clearly racially insensitive book. Yes. Illustrated book. Very racially. It was over 100 years old. Right. No publishing house is going to print that book these days. No. It's just, so why bring it up now? That yeah, is and, in and, our and, ugly and, past. And by, and by the way, you know, I don't think... We're not saying at all that there's not issues, right? But the issues, nobody, nobody in their right mind, they're just critically thinking, could honestly believe that we're using just the race stuff for examples right now for fake news. That racial ten, the, the racial issues are worse now than they were in the 1960s. That's my point. Nobody in the right yes, mind could believe that they still they're. they're st People still have these, and that's what I want to say. Prejudices, yeah. Um, because I mean, think about. Here's what I was going to say. But I've always felt like they're both sides. I mean, like black people have these inherited um, prejudices against white people that they grew up here in. You know, sure. like we grew up here in. You know, the N word a lot more when I was little. <clears throat> I, I my generation was the generation that stopped it. I'll, I'll take credit for that. I really absolutely. Will. We yeah. taught our kids. Do not say this shit ever. Right, and and I and I'll say, and, you know, in my case, that was my parents. That was not a thing, ever. That was yeah, not a thing. yeah. No, I, I would I would hear it in my family. Um, when I was a kid, yeah, I would hear it as a descriptor, not as a hate speech. Honestly, yeah. I just yeah. being straight up with you, I heard it, and it got phased out. But the news would like you to think. Yes, I mean seriously, that is still like a very, like a common shit. thing the behind news. closed doors. Yeah, and that all, all we have to do is close our front door, and then it's white power. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> right? My kids grew up seeing my heroes on the wall that are black. I, I know. I'm not. I know exactly. Same as my daughter too. That's what she. I mean, it's like we were talking about this the other day, or about something. Uh, was talking about something. I can't remember. Maybe leading up to this podcast, I believe, and I was like, man, and we're, I mean, just around here, a lot of people, but all my heroes were black dudes, especially if they were named Mike. Pick a Mike. Yeah, right. Pick one. Yeah. I guarantee you there's posters in there still in frames, by the way. I hadn't built a hang up any on these damn walls yet. But yeah, they, I mean, and that, look, I know, I guess that goes to the, I have a, a black friend argument or something, maybe, I don't know, but. Uh, I do. That bothers me too. It, it, I'm sorry, but that bothers it, because me because we grew up in a town that's basically fifty fifty. Essentially, it might be sixty four. Who cares? But the point being that you know, uh, we all went to school and and we hung out with real black people and had to spend the night and went to their house and yes. played ball together and all this stuff. These people in the news don't live like that. They right. don't. They've never done had a met, had a real black friend in the same town where you grew up in the Thank same. Thank you. They they just have not. You can tell because Thank you. anybody that has to yell out, "Hey, look at me, I'm not racist." Come on, yeah. I mean, yeah. We we're so comfortable to, with it that. We don't think about pointing it out. Right. I don't have to get on camera and say, I don't have to, in other words, you don't have to see what goes on. Uh, like, I don't have to prove on camera who I am. It's the things that go unseen. Right. The uh, Literally, you know the mean? only reason that I'm bringing up who I am is because this is a fake news podcast, mm -hmm. and I see the news, and, and I see, you know, how can we be in 2020 and the KKK is in the news on the daily? Yes. I mean, well, don't call us rednecks in one breath, and then when we tell you there's no clan here, say, well, you're not the right rednecks. <laughs> right, exactly. You didn't grow up in the right South. Exactly, because we're going to already get comments saying, yeah, but you don't see it through the eyes of, like, say, our black friends. 
And yes, that's true. But I've never heard them mention anything to me, and 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 I've never heard them have. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was talking to one of my coaches um, just uh, about a year and something ago, uh, a little maybe a little more one of Camden's games at my old school, and this was a coach that came in just a year or two, right? Probably when I was a freshman, a black guy who was a couple, I want to say five six years ahead of us because he went to college and played locally. Came back as a as the coach for the the girls basketball team when I was on the um, men's team, obviously, and then later on when my coach left, he took over the varsity. Anyway, the point being, that I talked to him at a softball game. We were talking about the political climate. And this was back in probably 2017 and 2018, mm-hmm. and he we talked about it straight up, just like me and you are now. He said, "I've never seen shit like this in my lifetime. I've never had these kind of issues. It's insane to me what I see on the news." And so. You know, you have this, you know, I think, I don't know, there's a there's a majority of people who just don't talk about it, and uh, anyway. Here, let, let me, I want to make this point, because we've talked about this too off camera. If you would um, open the doors to a gymnasium and yeah. let mm-hmm. the whole student population walk through those doors, you'll notice that people just tend to sit um, with people of their own color in general, and then you'll see it blending over uh, some. I believe, um, you know, now this generation, it would look different than when we and Chris and I went. Yep, to I school. Think so and I really uh, believe it would be was... more salt and pepper looking mixed. Yeah, uh, yeah. now and than I was going to say, I was going to say that because if you took like if that was an experiment, right, and you did it like let's say you enter, let's take our four years of high school. Mm-hmm. Our freshman year, you did this experiment, and you had just everybody walk in the gym. Just everybody go sit down, and mm-hmm. you just kind of took a picture, a snapshot of the gym. Mm-hmm. It would be more like that, I would guess. Sophomore year, junior, senior. By the time you got to a senior year, it's mixed. Because everybody's got because to know each everybody's other. everybody's got to know each other. In so the beginning, when a, nobody knows each other, oh, right. let me go sit right And I here. had brought that up to you before. I said, what if you did that same thing, and let's say you had just an experiment, um, you had, you know, a group of black people stand over here, a group of white people stand over here, or whatever. You can, you know, whatever colors we have to. I hate talking about race, but we have to for the sake of the podcast. But then you took a, let's say, a young two or three year, let's say three or four, I know, old enough to walk, mm-hmm. black boy, and said, go in there and have a seat. Now, where is he going to walk? Exactly. Now, <clears throat> he's going to walk to the people of his color. Yes. Now, that doesn't mean that black kid's racist. It doesn't mean it at all. It's just a natural thing from that age. Yeah. You're familiar with that. Yep. So they take that, uh, you know, I, it's just an example of, you know, how things change when you learn. All this shit's taught. Hate is taught. It is taught, dude. Period. It and is. it's just not taught anymore like it used to and be. It except. Can... Now in this political climate, we're being told to hate again. We are. That's what really bothers me. That's the point. Is is it can be untaught? That's the only reason we're talking about. This yes, shit if people now, will talk, actually, these are listen. uncomfortable podcast. We trust me. We love talking about Bigfoot and shit, <laughs> and it <laughs> and they flows can... easier, and we don't have to worry about stepping in potholes. But <clears throat> this is important. Yes, hate can be untaught. Um, just think about it. Just think how you feel in your heart, because I do believe people are good people. I do too. I, do. I think the overwhelming majority of people are good, and they they don't really think the way they say they have to in their little groups, right. because you'll get ostracized if you have a different thought or you say, "Nah, I don't really believe all cops are bad" or well, whatever you know, yeah. whatever it may be. I wanted to mention before we um, got done to a couple more examples from this uh, that people may be interested in. From the documentary, um, so going back to hoax and fake news, we had uh, a, a lot of people will be familiar, I think, with Cassie J. This mm-hmm. was the this was the girl who did the Red Pill movie. This 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 was pretty popular a couple years ago, you know. And then the, the term Red Pill was a big thing. So uh, they use her as an example in this too, because this goes into you know they're they're trying to use this political. Uh, you know, warfare with this fake news, and they're, but they use identity politics, and this goes into that as well. So they use race, they use gender, 
whatever. So you can be whatever a phobe. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's the idea. We watched the Red Peel. Yes. Uh, you know, it was it was a really well put together and it, documentary. And it's eye opening. Yeah. Uh, it even was for for us. Yeah. And the idea is that Cassie uh, Cassie was a devout feminist. Devout. And you know, and when we say feminist, we're talking about third wave, modern, not the stuff, the you know, the suffrage movement, the '60s and stuff. That was right. classical feminism. But she was this hardcore feminist who thought that men's rights activists were all evil, misogynist assholes, right? Mm-hmm. Because men have no issues, apparently. Right. She does this uh, before this, before the Red Pill. She had done a a movie because she's a filmmaker, an independent filmmaker. And she did a movie, uh, essentially a feminist movie, and it was praised and loved in the media. She got all kinds of media attention. She got all the interviews. You know, she had all this stuff going on. Everybody loved her. She sets out to do the Red Pill. And you can, this is mentioned, and you can watch the Red Pill. She'll tell you the story. You can watch her TED Talk. She'll tell you the story a lot better than I can tell it. But basically, in a nutshell, she sets out to do this movie to basically prove it. Yeah. To prove men's rights activists are all a bunch of chauvinists. That's right. And they're just whining because women are coming up in the world and they don't like that change or something. Some that's always the thing. They don't like the change. Turns out she goes and interviews all these people and she starts learning and looking and she follows up with her own like, like we're saying. She don't just listen and say, Oh, that's right. the truth. She goes and researches it. And this was a couple years, obviously, a process of making this movie. And they're bringing up, you know, I'm not to get into the whole movie, but like, you know, the examples of, you know, men losing their kids and divorces, suicide rates, danger, right. j- dangerous jobs, all this kind of stuff where there's issues that men have that are legitimate. She learns all this stuff. And through this process of like over a year of interviewing, researching, talking to these people over and over and over, she realizes, well, shit, I'm doing a movie about, you know, equality. It kind of should include, you know, she's talking about specifically gender equality. Mm-hmm. Uh, I need to include men in that too because they have real issues that I didn't even know about. Right. So she puts together this movie. She changes. She don't really label herself a feminist, but she still labors, you know, she's still about gender equality. She just now includes men. So the rounds start for promoting the red pill. Uh oh. They don't like her anymore. Nope. The same darling yeah, who sizing you were talking about. All the all that started, and uh, she just wanted to promote her movie just like she had done the previous movie. But the same people didn't really like this one because it just didn't follow their narrative. Yeah. She's one who would who was a hardcore feminist who went out here in the real world, talked to real people, learned a lot about how they're not necessarily just evil chauvinists. And changed her tune and put it on film and just was honest about it. They didn't watch. They she did interviews where they didn't even watch the movie. They they labeled her like these headlines again. Feminist now changes her tune, uh, you know, and 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 denounces exactly. feminism and all. I mean, it's all these weird, you know, misleading headlines. That's it. And all and she did tried was, to basically destroy her. Yeah, cancel her. They tried to cancel her. And now that's why the red pill got so popular because it shows this process because she filmed it all. Right. And I thought that was really cool. So that's another example in the the hoax documentary. I don't know if they touch on that in the uh, no, after not at all. One. Not at all. Yeah, that's what I figured. And um, yeah, there's a bunch of different examples uh, on there on there. Yep. And I'm telling you, man, it's it's well worth it. <clears throat> and, uh, well worth a watch. I I hope that some of you guys go watch it before it gets removed from any other platforms. Yeah, because it probably will. Because the weird thing is that we found out afterwards is Amazon not only took it off where you could rent it or or buy it, if you had already purchased it and it was in your library, Amazon took it back from you. Without refunds. Right. And the reason is because they call out Jeff Bezos. They do. And it's not big. It doesn't cover him the whole time. Just a small little blurb about him in it. Yep, and uh, it's just one quick little thing, and and I mean that's the that's obviously the the thinking behind is why they always because that it has was, to be yeah it was I mean it cannot there's there's nothing else you can take from it because mm-hmm. it was apparently in the top fifty uh, when it was up there for the short time in the top fifty documentaries or or titles I guess on Amazon. Interestingly enough, it's still on Google Play, and they called out 
Alphabet Inc., Google in it as well. That's that's a great point. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, so it's still on YouTube. I can't believe it was on YouTube, honestly. I can't either. Uh, it was on YouTube. It was on it's on Google Play, iTunes, and Vudu, which I I don't I've never used Vudu, but you can't watch it on Amazon anymore. It'll say you can see it. It's there. It'll you can watch the trailer, but it'll say not available in your area. Yeah. Um, let me make another point about fake news. How about and, and teams? Yeah, yeah. All right. Good point. How about this? So, something happens, say a video gets dropped, right? And it gets you all pissed off, right? Oh, gosh, that makes me so mad. And then another version of the video comes out and oh. with like a couple minutes or something that, yes. that were left off. Of course. And it feels intentionally left off because it, it kind of tells a oh, paints a, the picture more clearly. Yes. And the problem is because of all the shit that the original cut video caused and all the arguments that had already happened, people are having a hard time backpedaling and saying, they won't. and saying, man, I didn't have all the facts. Yeah, they they will absolutely not. So they anymore. stay entrenched yes. with this truth staring them dead in the face of the whole picture now. Yep. And they'll just And that's not healthy. And you know that's not healthy. You wouldn't teach your kids to be that way. No. You would teach your kids to go, Oh, I'm sorry. I did not have the whole I made story. a mistake and I, I made helped, a mistake. And I helped spread this false narrative. Yes. But we are so entrenched on these teams. And if you're not, if you want to talk about morals and stuff, if you're not doing that, that's fucking immoral. It is. If you like retweet something that, you know, Trump said horribly, yeah. or, you know, something horrible he said, right? And then you find out that they edited that and he didn't really say that, but that's just what they ran with for their narrative to make sure that they can damage him in some way because it's election year or back in 2016 before that 2015 when the campaigns are going on and then they and then you don't come out and say okay I'm sorry he didn't say that that's not what he meant they took it out of context then that's immoral and you know it yeah, I know man. you know it's immoral and I don't care who's it about because it happens with Trump it happened with Obama and they're both fucking bullshit they're both wrong right and and when the new shit comes out, you're like, fuck, I had a lot of miles in that argument. Yeah. But it doesn't matter how many miles you got in it. No. You have to change your stance sometimes. And the better we can get at that, about backlash against whoever put out that first video, if you would start pushing back on them because they <clears throat> put you in a place you should have never been in to begin with. Right. Until we do that, so the but yes, it, there has to be some repercussions. Yeah, for that. what you're saying is, if you are a you know you, you can support who you want, right? But you got to start calling out people on your own side. You have to. You cannot like we we cannot do this podcast and just call out you know fucking um, I don't know CNN or MSNBC or That's Fox. Right. You got to call out your the, you know if you are uh, more conservative, you have to call out the extreme right. If you're more liberal, you have to call out the extreme left. That high, they're both hijacking the, the the parties or the general ideas or whatever, and they're not allowing the middle to talk anymore. Yeah, because they're all getting kind of pulled more to the extremes, and it's Thank fucking you. stupid. Yeah, and and the middle is the biggest slice of the country. We're the no, we got the right. numbers, right? But we're controlled by these outer parts. The the one that really just steps and sticks in my mind is that freaking teenage kid with the MAGA hat. I got so mad that he approached a Native American dude and was oh, mocking yes, him. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And then the whole story comes out that the Native American dude approached him right. and got in his face. Yes. And, and then, I was like, well, hold on, damn. I, I was pissed at this little kid. I was thinking, you know, Yeah, this is one of heart. these bastards that makes everybody look bad at yes. this party and whatever. Yeah. And, you know, fuck him. And What a co cocksucker. You yeah. know? And <laughs> he then, a dick And up. then turn to find out the older dude got in his face and was because he had a MAGA hat on. And it's like, right. 
Or you know, we wow. on, on that uh, wow. on, on that documentary, the girl that had make Bitcoin great again hat and got bear got maced. fucking bear maced for make Bitcoin great. I mean, again. yeah, she purposely wore a hat like it, but the point is, it's a hat. It's she a damn should, hat. She should be able to walk down the street wearing whatever the fuck she wants. And saying what the fuck she wants. You don't have to agree with it. Here's what happens when you get your feelings hurt. Nothing. No. Nothing happens. Nothing happens when you get offended. You the don't s- you don't die in your sleep. No, nope. sun comes up tomorrow. It does. Um, if somebody wins an election you don't you don't like, you just get up the next day and go to work. I mean, you know, we 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 have kind of purposely not talked a lot of politics and stuff because we don't, like I said, this is our escape to talk whatever we want, interesting topics. And, and I don't want to get pigeonholed. No, no, because no. Because I no. know how I like stuff on all over the place. Yes, all over the place. exactly. Uh, I, I don't, like I said, it's the arbitrary boxes, you know, because yeah. there's going to people, that be, here's the thing, we're talking about all this stuff openly and both sides of things and trying to make sure it's fair and balanced. <laughs> you know? Right. But there's going to be people that listen to a you know the beginning of this or something and say, oh god, they're this. Yes, I know. And, or maybe they catch the, the the middle of it. Oh god, they're that. <laughs> right. You know, and that's the sad part is we, you know, nobody, whether it's us or anybody, can just have a conversation anymore because the first thing they hear that goes against you know, I'm not saying everybody, obviously. Hopefully, this is starting to change. I hope so. But the first thing you hear that may not, you know. Uh, you, that you don't agree with as far as you know a side or whatever team you're on, then all of a sudden the rest of it is like like Charlie Brown's fucking teacher. Right. It's sad. It's almost like when you say the word but anything that comes after it, <laughs> yeah, it's complete bullshit. And and this you is know? what kills me, dude. <laughs> I, honestly, like I I have issues, man. I am not this virtuous person. Who needs to tell no. everybody do this virtue signaling and stuff? Um, Excuse me. I have my quirks that are pretty shitty too. Like I do notice probably ninety nine point nine nine percent of the time when somebody types and uses "you're wrong." Yeah, yes. Right. Yes. But what I'm saying is, I don't see that they used "you're wrong" and then. S- make that whole paragraph they type to me, it doesn't invalidate it. Right, but that's what people would use as an argument. like if we would say something on here and say, well, you know, like in 1759 when this happened and this, you know, if it happened in 1769, that's what people focus on. Right. They don't focus on the point of everything. And that's where we've got as a society. Yeah, so they'll, oh, look at your cow. So look say, at your crooked tooth. Oh, well, you know, in their in their however they're thinking about this. Oh, well, God, they got the date wrong right at the beginning, so the yes. rest of it's invalid. I, and I can't. That's bullshit. So don't be that person. Like, work on that. If you know you have that problem, work on that. Because I cannot stand a self righteous motherfucker who, <laughs> who is smart enough. Yes. Who's yes. smart enough. To, to know better than to be a self righteous motherfucker, <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I completely get it. Like I completely just get because it. I'm not going to chastise fact, somebody because they backwards. used the wrong your. Yeah, because I've done it myself by accident too. It doesn't right. invalidate the point. But even if they didn't do it on accident, even if they used your wrong and they would do it a hundred percent of the time, yes, their point is still. Can be valid. It may not be. It may not be. But, it but don't, don't mean you just, just discredit just the rest. Discredit of it. it right because you <laughs> noticed that. Oh, exactly. this is a dumb fucker. I don't even need to read that. Exactly. Like I remember, you know, I'd, I'd I'd sent somebody an article. This was years ago. I sent somebody an article on something. We were talking about some political thing, and I sent her like actual verified documented facts. And this is a friend of ours, you know, and. I sent it to her from a website, all sourced and cited and all that bullshit. But the f- <laughs> the first thing she said was, "Well, it starts off by calling me an idiot, so I can't read it because it was, you know, it slanted one way or the other." And it's like you can't read it. So if you've watched the same, if you read the same article pasted over here, it'll be fine, and you would read the thing. 
So she she didn't read it because she didn't really want to read it. She didn't want to know right. the truth because it kind of went against the way she presents herself in the public. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is. It's a public persona. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of this bullshit is, is public personas. Right. And if you want to play that game, fine. But it ain't helping things if you actually give a shit about helping things. Yeah. You know what I'm and, and I mean, honestly, uh, probably the one thing that I'm – Better at than anybody I know is memorizing sports. Stats. I swear to God, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, you are actually like, yes. memorizing sports stats really well. But when I'm talking to say the dishwasher at work, <laughs> right. and he tells me, you know, he's a big sports fan, and he says, you know, remember that time Barry Sanders got 2,500 yards in a season, <laughs> and I know in my heart that his best season was 2053, right? I still know what he's talking about. Yes, you're you know not what I going mean? to say. I know he's talking about 1997. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know? You're not lambasting him because he got the number wrong. Right, and that's whatever. the world we live in. Do you not agree? It is, absolutely. It, like, Instead of having the good conversation about Barry Sanders, yes. it's, you're focused on some arbitrary I bullshit have ended because it right he made there. a mistake. But yeah, we had a great conversation about it. Right. Now, I knew he was wrong, but I didn't even tell him. No, there's no there's point. There's no point in it. Unless that came up during the conversation saying, oh, yeah, I think it was actually you know 2503 or, or 2053 yeah, or whatever it was. Yeah, if he kept harping on but, it, I would. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, but, but no shit. It exactly. doesn't invalidate, you know, it doesn't, he's not automatically an end enemy because he got the stat wrong no and that's what i see so much on facebook and you know this is a tough time guys we got people who are not a, who don't believe in wearing masks and we have people who do believe in wearing masks right. and we have some people who kind of you know don't really care but everybody's drug into it right now. Exactly. And, and, and you know, and, and everybody has good points. Yes. On both and sides. there's so much misinformation out there. there and is. You, know, you don't know what to believe. You don't. And, and of course, it's guess what season it is. Yeah. It's, 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 it's an election season, it's election year. And, and people say, you know, don't politicize this virus. No, it's done. That, that, that ship sailed. This thing's that, been politicized. Oh, big time. And so just saying, like, I don't know. I can see on Facebook these arguments, of, say, about the mask. Just in general, I want to harp on it, but there'll be a nurse commenting, and yep. then another nurse will come in and go, that's wrong. Well, yeah, right. I'm a nurse, too. Well, how many years have you been a nurse? Well, yeah. Oh, 17. Well, I've been 19. <laughs> and it's like, come yes. on, guys. You I've know, read the same Why shit. do we have to do this to each other? Yeah, I just don't know. Uh, oh, you must be one of those nurses that works at the front desk. <laughs> like, I saw like that. Like, not a real nurse. Yeah, you're not a real nurse. You're not an ER nurse. Have you ever or... been in the ER for 19 <laughs> hours and doing an emergency surgery on a gunshot? <laughs> what the fuck has this mask conversation turned into? I know. But everybody wants to be right so bad, they can't stand My it. My dick is bigger than yours. Yeah, it's the dude. oldest argument in the book. I mean, yeah. it's not even about the subject anymore. That sounded like George Carlin when you said that. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. My God has a bigger dick than your yeah. God. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it is. He talked about it back in the day. He days. really did, man. But uh, yeah, it's just insanity to me, man. So, I mean, I hope that, you know. Pretty much open your eyes. Is, is, I know that's that's what we believe is just. Yes. just Believe your eyes, your own eyes. Right. Or half of it, at least. You know, just, I, I, don't, I don't get the whole thing. This is why, you know, a lot of people ask me, do this, 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 and this on YouTube. Whenever. I just don't, that's why I don't watch TV. I mean, because even now, movies and shows are political. And I just can't. I can't deal with it. Yeah. I, when you I don't, feel like... I, I don't watch Fox. See, and I, don't, I don't watch news. I'll, I'll read some articles, and then I'll, like I said, I'll take the time. And, and not every time, but on big issues that I care about, I'm interested in, I'll take the time to go look up the actual statement or the actual clip, like yeah. you were saying before about video clips. Yes. And most of the time, it's complete bullshit. I agree. Most of the time. I agree. And ne it, it, whichever side, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter which side. It's all bullshit, and people need to be able to call each other out on their own side and stop the bullshit. But when you said something about watching TV, you're right. Like, you can get, like, 20 minutes into a show that you think is pretty good, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're like, whoa, they're directing me a certain way. That's, that's all it is. And that, and so you've had and the rise of so all these annoying. groups on YouTube and stuff like that. Um, that you know, are and like for example, Star Wars was a big one, mm -hmm. right? You know, Episode Nine, The Last Jedi was huge in this regard because it became a big political movie. 
from Ryan Johnson, and people hated it. And the people who hated it were longtime, lifelong Star Wars fans of all ages. Yeah. But they tried to make it out to be that all of us Star Wars fans were racist and misogynist and all oh, that kind of see, stuff. That. That's, that's become, that was their narrative. It wasn't it because it could they made a bad movie. No. It wasn't because no the characters were shitty, way, you know, huh? were, were horrible characters and wasn't written well and didn't fit with any of the old movies at all as far as continuity. It wasn't that at all. Mm. We're all we're misogynist. Yeah. Or racist or whatever the hell the ist was right. at the moment. And so the fandom menace was born. This kind of unnamed, you know. Oh yeah, that's right. That's yeah. Right. So this group of people on YouTube that and I had started saying some of this stuff years ago when I was doing Star Wars videos before Episode Seven and Eight and Nine came out. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, so it's just it's just crazy. So these big countercultures happen, and then Rotten Tomatoes. That's that's the point I want to make really quickly. This HBO documentary now hoaxed. You can't find on Rotten Tomatoes. That's crazy. Now this is a fair documentary for both sides. I, that's what I'm saying. We're saying watch it. Right. After the truth is on Rotten Tomatoes at a hundred percent, a hundred percent. You can't get a hundred percent of people to believe we landed on the fucking moon or not. No, you can't get ninety percent of people to believe anything. No. So how is big groups? Of, how is ninety percent of people voting for one party, for example? How is a hundred percent of people love this fucking documentary on HBO? Bullshit. 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 Yeah. So it's clear. Everything pretty much is fake news. The point being days. is just they're telling everybody, they're directing you and what to think and whatever. Mm -hmm. Just fucking stop it. Just just live your own in your own world and look out the window. You know, have conversations, be empathetic, all that stuff. We're not some, I don't know. I don't I don't feel like some kind of preacher. No, I don't evang want to evangelist on here on YouTube, like, hey, you know, do what we do. I, we're not perfect either. We're just saying it's just get to the point where it affects everything. Like what we talk about on the podcast. Can we say this? Can we say that? Can we joke about this subject? Because right. it might be too sensitive these days. And anyway, so we just, we came, we started talking about the fake news thing. We came across that documentary and was like, whoa. Yeah. I mean, we, we I, I told him, and you agreed, because it's typically not our thing. If we don't talk about it, it's irresponsible. Yeah, yeah, I believe that. I believe it's yeah. that important. I do too. Because. So, I, Whatever. You know, I I wish we could live in a world where you could trust the news. No. Um, but unfortunately, it needs to be questioned. Now everything. Now when when you do, right now, hopefully this changes. Hopefully people start questioning more and more and more. Because I mean that's what they try to teach you in school and in college is to be a critical thinker. No, 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 not in college. Um, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> that, that the lip service says so. Yeah, <laughs> right. But exactly. yeah, so the the thing is, um, if you if you are a critical thinker, you're like a conspiracy nut. Yes, if, if, yes, yes. You know, and that we shouldn't be afraid to question things. We really, I mean, you know this. Everybody knows this shit. Yeah. I mean, and it makes me it really makes me wonder, like I said, I think a lot of I'm not saying everybody, but I think a lot of it is just the public because Twitter is safe, right? I mean, you're anonymous essentially. You know, you can be who you want or say what you want or whatever and, you know, that it's just it, it's almost like to me that I mean, look at 2016. Yeah. There's a reason that Trump won. Yeah. And Now, is it because all those people that voted for Obama because they had to but just but just math. Oh. Same people voted for Obama twice or at least right. once had to vote for the man, but it was all based off racism somehow. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's 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 weird. Just think about that. That's, that's just they, weird. You know, yeah, they, just don't. They match all it. of a sudden overnight turned into racists. Yeah, it's just it's odd. He was um, never a racist until he was a, excuse me running for office. Yeah, well, speaking of 2016, that is to me a big deal. Like if if you really believe. That Russian hackers <laughs> can create Facebook groups and put propaganda against Hillary, and this mind, this little simple mind control of memes, cause her to lose an election. Yeah, right. When if they you believe that, and you don't believe that the news is fake, <laughs> exactly, or possibly could be fake, right? Something's wrong. Exactly, and it's, I mean, like I said, it's seriously. not just what they show; it's what they don't say. That's the, that's the biggest thing. I definitely am not saying that 
Facebook doesn't influence things, and it can. And but it, that's and what they do. You know, that's, that's they put out their own ads yeah, to influence the election. A hundred percent. They pay for them. And so I've never understood that. But that you see, that's the thing though. That was all shown to be this. Not to get into specific issues, but that was all shown to be bullshit anyway. And it's still a big. It's still a big thing. You know, it's still it's still believed, and they're going to do well, it again this year. By that the way, that HBO documentary. Yes, they clearly say that. That's yeah. that's how the election was won was Russia. Right. It it can't be that there was a, it was a bad candidate that people didn't like. It can't, can't be. Possibly be. It can't be. It's just that's impossible. No, no, <laughs> you, because they don't have you in reality. Everybody's in a bubble. That's the reason. And you know, if you say you're on one side or the other, you're chastised. So people shut the fuck up about it. You think they're gonna tell the truth on a poll? I mean, she won the popular vote. So how can you get mad? I mean, obviously, a lot of people turned out to vote for her. Yeah, and but then they, they of course, now, of course, then they were after the Electoral College. But what if the tides turn and New York and California were all conservative? Would you want it then? Right. I mean, I mean we're we're talking about both sides here. You got to. You just what so we were saying earlier about the Alex Jones point, or people like him. Yeah, you, you might want, be happy don't you, he got canceled. Don't you really want Alex Jones's free speech, even though he's crazy? Right. As as long as he's not calling for violence and shit, like we're talking about the First Amendment here. Do you really want him to be canceled? Right. Do you really want his speech to be canceled? Because if his speech can be canceled, then you your side's person can. can be too. Yeah. That's the idea. Dude, he was generating a lot of money for YouTube. Yeah. And they canceled him. So don't think, oh, well, you know, he was a nobody. He was a big deal. And if he can get canceled, trust me, if the tides turn and yep. you know, your your point, your the people you listen to could get canceled. Your your voice could get canceled. Yep, absolutely. We'll probably be canceled. Matter of fact, we're probably doing this for nothing. <laughs> 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 Nobody's going to see this podcast. It depends on how it tight because they're going to transcribe everything in here and po- these buzzwords will. Oh my gosh. So, I didn't I mean, even think about that. Yeah. So feel free to help us out on Patreon. <laughs> because Holy shit. This ain't going to be monetized just because it's a political thing. It's, we mentioned some political issues, I'm sure. Yes. I'm, sure it's, I'm sure it's gone. But Smoke Screen anyway. Podcast Patreon. Don't forget. Yes. We're on the Smoke Screen channel, but we have our own. Yeah, Patreon. there's a separate. Yes. It, it's The links are in the, the description on YouTube. And by the way, if you listen on SoundCloud, Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, and Podbean, see, it's different order every time. But it uh, flows. Yeah, I guess. That's working now. It's, um, yes. Leave us, a, leave us a rating on there if you don't mind. We'd really appreciate it if you listen on other platforms. And be sure to subscribe on YouTube. We'll probably lose a couple thousand on this one, but that's fine. Uh, no, no. We may as well show our titties. <laughs> Might as well. Are we good? Is it is there anything we've missed? I'm sure. There's, you know, this could be a ten part series. Honestly, it really could, and, and that's it why really my mind could. goes all over the place. It's like, oh, don't forget that little bit. Don't forget yeah. that little thing. Yeah. But yeah, this is a big deal. And once you see the documentary, you'll see why. It, yes. You'll you'll want to uh, do your own podcast and show all the people in your family. I would hope so, but there's a reason that this is not as popular as it should be. There's absolutely a reason, um, and you you we're not going to tell you what to think. No, you're going to watch it and determine for yourself what the reason is. So anyway, I think that's good. I think we're good. I think we are good. Uh, so we, we just let it go. This is a little long longer than usual. But we don't care. We don't have no rules here. <laughs> so unless again it gets canceled. <laughs> Off you New rules. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate you listening. Hopefully everybody checks that out. We'll see you next time. We'll let it fade to black. <coughs> Sorry. We went a little long that time. My voice I is gone. Do, uh... <laughs>